Hello, welcome back to another episode of the No Money Spent series, episode 10. And real quick, before we get started, I was thinking about it recently, and I think I'm going to set kind of the end goal, the end date to this series. Well, not the end date, but like the end, the ending point. So yeah, No Money Spent series and stuff, that can go on for the whole year, because there's always stuff to do. But personally, for me, it's kind of it's kind of getting more... I don't want to use the word annoying, but that's the only word that's coming to mind now. It's kind of just getting more annoying to do than it is fun. I don't know, it's not like I don't like making videos and stuff like that, because obviously if I didn't, I wouldn't be making YouTube videos at all. But it just kind of is frustrating to me when, like, I mean, I have all these packs to open that I'm just leaving sit in my inventory for so long, and I want to I wanna open them, and honestly, sometimes the only reason I record a no money spent video or an update to one is just because I want to open packs, not really because I have much to show off. So I don't know. I mean, it's not that big of a thing, but you know, it's just kind of, it's just kind of a pain after a while to have to wait to do certain things and and uh, you know show off certain things. And like I said at the beginning, I wanted to have a gameplay in every video, but I kind of like, especially right now, I don't even know if I want to play a Ring Seasons game. And then you couple all that with the fact that like, and this doesn't really matter too much to me because you know at this point on my channel, it's not like anything really does crazy good numbers or anything like that. So the numbers aren't really what's making me put an end in sight for this series. But like, I kind of assumed No Money Spent would do a little bit better viewership wise than it is now but uh it's not really doing as good as i thought like it's about 20 to 30 views an episode at this point but i don't know the numbers it's not what's making me do it i'm just it's kind of just an overall thing that is leading me to kind of want to start moving towards wrapping up the no money spent series and i think to me the logical ending to uh put on this series is just once i finish this whole mlb live series collection and collect mickey mantle so that's kind of felt like the ultimate goal ever since the beginning, at least like the first ultimate goal. But I think just with the way that I'm feeling at this point, I think once I get Mickey Mantle, that's just going to be the end of the No Money Spent series, at least for the time being. I don't know, there could be some things that come out later or, you know, I might just feel like I want to make videos like this again. But uh, yeah, that's just the ending we'll put in sight now. I probably already spent too long talking about that because we have we do have other stuff to go through in this video. Now I haven't done all that much in terms of like progress on things since the last No Money Spent video, at least not that I can remember. Uh, it's just been ever since this event came out, I was playing a lot of that. Uh, and I got to 40 wins, which gave me Eddie Murray. So I do have Eddie Murray and Shinsu Chu to sell. I was originally going to do a, a debut with them in their own video, but then it was kind of too late and I still haven't done it yet. And I feel like it wouldn't be like something that people would be craving to see. And I'm going to hold off on selling Eddie Murray for a little bit at least, just because I still plan on playing this event to its completion. And it's got a part two, so I don't know if things are going to be added. And Eddie Murray would be a pretty good switch hitter to put at first base for the event. So I'm going to hold on to him for a little while, at least until I finish up to the point where I want to finish the event. But yeah, other than that, there's not too much progress to be made, or to talk about at least, um, for the event though. I did end up buying some people. Uh, so that's kind of why my stub count is a lot lower than it probably was at the end of the last video. So if you remember, every single boss from the third inning program was a switch hitter. Uh, it was Chipper, Victorino, and uh, Brian Roberts, and they're all switch hitters. And I actually just went ahead and bought all three of them for the event. So I know I, I had gotten Chipper early, sold him for like 70k. Uh, so then I ended up buying all these guys back for around 40k. And I wasn't sure, because like I, every program so far, I've been getting all the bosses to get the next voucher. And I was kind of just planning on doing that anyway. But I wasn't sure if I was just going to keep these guys. But they're kind of going down now, so there's no reason to sell them now and then buy them back. So, I don't know. I'll probably just end up hanging on to them. I haven't locked them in for the, the next voucher yet. I'm probably going to wait until the program itself actually starts, just uh, to see like if I'll actually benefit from locking them in and getting the 75 voucher like it all depends on kind of the timing but yeah for now i have all those guys in my inventory and uh i also since i was using him for that event so much i have that's the wrong screen i made a lot of progress towards their prestiges so um brian roberts he needs a lot of hits he needs 108 hits 
So I'm about a quarter of the way, a little less than a quarter of the way there. His hits and RBIs are where the lowest are. Uh, so that's the progress I made with him. And then Chipper here, uh, he's probably the closest. I'm, I'd say I'm about halfway with him. Um, he only needs 79 hits though. So who knows, maybe if I keep playing that event until 60 wins, I'll be really close and then I'll be able to get this prestige chipper and he could end up being one of the first prestiges I get because I'm still pretty close with Helton, but he's kind of a slow grind. Uh, and then Victorino, he got more hits than Jones, but he also needs 108 hits. And I don't know, he's kind of lacking. I mean, first of all, he needs a lot more hits. I mean, he still needs about as many hits as Chipper Jones need at total. Uh, but then he's also got like runs and RBI and extra base hits that he's kind of slacking at. But yeah, I, I'm, I'm still planning on using them as of this point. There's still at least Chipper Jones and Victorino would be starters on my normal team. Because uh, Brian Roberts, right now I have either Madrigal or Sandberg to play second base. So yeah, honestly, I can't think of much else to go over in terms of what, I, what I've done. So we're just going to move into the collection, the obligated one collection per episode. And uh, we only have eight teams left, and the Indians are the only team that doesn't have a diamond above a 90 overall that you need to collect. So they're the team we're doing today. I went ahead and got Ramirez and Lindor. They cost about 42k, I think, to get both of them. So we're going to go ahead, lock them both in, finish that collection, and claim Cody Allen. And apparently we also got program rewards from the Indians affinity. I wonder if that finished it, actually. I'm just curious now, checking on this affinity. And yeah, I know I'm slacking on affinities, but I'm working on that. 67 out of 70, so only three more. And the first stage of the uh, Indians affinity program would be complete. Shame I already did their moment. That'd be an easy way to get it up to 70. But it shouldn't be too difficult to get them three more points. I'm working on, since we're on this screen already, that's kind of the next thing I've been working on is um, getting all the affinities done. And honestly, I still have like the, this big vision in my head to uh, get like all the showdown vouchers and just like do it all at once and have like 200 plus, probably close to 300 packs to open. Uh, so right now where I'm standing at that is I'm just trying to get all the stage ones done. And I'm on the ALE still. Uh, I pretty much just started doing this again because I was playing the event for a while. So I just started playing showdowns again. So I have 25 vouchers for the ALE. So I think I only need to do one more ALE showdown and then I have all their stage ones done. But I'm pretty much just planning on moving through the divisions and then doing stage two the same way, moving through the divisions. But anyway, we're back on the collection screen because I had actually forgotten about it whenever we finished the NL Central, but uh, I had the entire NL Central done, so we could have collected this Willie Stargell in the last one, and I just completely forgot to do it. So we're going to go ahead and do that. We get the 90 overall Stargell, 7,000 XP, and 4,000 stubs. So that gets us back over 200,000. And then obviously, since we finished the Indians, we also get to complete this one. So it's the same amount of stubs and XP. We get 90 overall Walter Johnson. Not the best card. I would have hoped he'd be a little bit better, but don't really plan on using him. So now we are left with only seven teams to go. And unfortunately, all seven of these teams have their own high diamond player above a 90. I think all of them only have one guy above a 90. But they're all so expensive, I don't understand what happened. Like, there was a stub sale, and then right when that stub sale ended, there was a live series event where you can only use live series players. And everyone, at least the high diamonds prices, I think the normal diamonds, everyone under a 90 overall live series, they kind of stayed the same. But all the high diamonds went up so much, and it was so frustrating because I still need every single one of them. I didn't have a single high diamond yet. And they all went up so much, like Trout alone has gone up 60k or over 60k. And then like other guys like Garrett Cole, he's probably gone up like 40k or more. So like in total, it's probably added at least to 250 to 300,000 stubs on to what I would have needed to finish the entire collection. So it's probably added a couple weeks, couple weeks worth of uh, grinding out stubs just because everyone's price decided to go up and I really don't know why. But yeah, that's really all to go over in terms of uh, non-pack things. So I think all we have left to do is open some packs. Now we have, I'm gonna save, cause like I mentioned when I was on the affinity screen, I have this 
crazy goal <laughs> of trying to get like all the team affinities done at once and open all those packs at once. So I'm going to save everything from team affinities um, for now. So all these affinity packs and I think all but one of these silver player packs I'm just going to hold off on. Uh, and then this ball is a habit. It is from an affinity, but I don't really care about that. I'll open that. Um, there'll be other ways to get another ball as a habit pack when I do that video. <laughs> so we'll just start. Um, we'll just start with some of the boring stuff here. So we got an unlockable. That's not going to be anything too crazy. I think you get all these. Uh, yeah, nothing really to go over there. Uh, and then we have. A flashback in Legend. I think I just got this when I was finishing up those collections. So it looks like Oral is who's going for the most right now. So I'll go ahead and pick him up and we'll sell him at some point. Next we got an Evolution player. The last Evolution player of the XP reward path. And I still need to do Pudge. He's the only one left. So I'll go ahead and pick him. And then I'll do his moments and unlock that 90, I think it's 91 Pudge at some point. Don't really plan on using him though, so it's not it's not that much of a priority. And then just because it's a guaranteed pack, I kind of like to get all the guaranteed stuff out of the way first. We're gonna open. I did hit diamond level one, so we got one more 99 overall to get. And you might call me crazy because <laughs> a lot of people they pretty much go with these three guys first: Sandberg, Posey, Jackson. I'm not gonna pick Reggie Jackson. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to go with Mini Minoso. And I just I just think it's for me with my team. See, a lot of people have trouble hitting hitting with Minoso. I haven't really had the trouble. I've used him in BR a couple times. He's doing pretty solid. He's not putting up crazy numbers or anything. But just with the way my team is right now, I need outfielder. I need a righty outfielder. And Minoso can field a lot better than Reggie Jackson can. And he's got more speed. So I just... I want Minoso, man. So I'm going to do it. 99 Mini Minoso joining the squad. And now we have all of the not guaranteed stuff. So I have one silver guy to open here. Uh, one silver and one gold. We're both from the event. Then I'm going to save the rest of the silvers and those affinity packs. We didn't get it. Didn't get anything out of the silver. Now let's see what we got out of the gold. Not too high of odds to get anything but a silver or a gold out of those specific packs. So like I said, we're saving these affinity packs, we're saving the rest of these silvers. So the next most boring thing to open is probably these show packs. But hey, I say boring, things could change on a dime. Like you don't know when it could happen where I'm just opening up a normal show pack and all of a sudden out flies an Arenado or out flies a Garrett Cole or heck, even out flies a Mike Trout. Who knows? I mean, it's, it's very unlikely. But if that were to happen, that uh, that drastically changes the course of this series and it speeds up the process of getting that Mickey Mantle. And I, I mean, now that I'm saying these and putting all these thoughts in my head, now I'm getting my hopes up when they shouldn't be. <laughs> but they are, and now I'm now I'm upset that I'm not pulling and I forgot to quick sell that icon. We got just two of these packs left. And I'm guessing we're not going to get anything out of these. One to go. Uh, I'm kind of rambling at this point, And it's just... A, just... Alright, now going by odds. Balling as I have is the next least likely to pull a diamond. So we're going to open that up next. And we all know how my Balling as a Habit luck has been this year. But I think the last Balling as a Habit pack that I opened, I did pull a diamond out of. So our luck might have turned around. It was only JT Real Muto though. But it was still the first diamond out of a Balling of the year. And we got, <laughs> yeah, we got another diamond out of a ball and is a habit pack both times. Now it's two times in a row I've pulled the diamond out of ball and is a habit pack. I think the luck might be turning around. And the crazy thing is, is both times I've gotten the diamond out of a ball and pack now, it's been in that second to last slot. Usually it's the furthest right slot that's like the guaranteed guy. And that's why it's a gold. So it's. <laughs> I'm, it's kind of crazy that I'm pulling it out of the second to last slot. Let's see who this is. Can it really be? Can it really be one of those big guys? Is that a possibility? National League right fielder, and he's a right-handed bat, so that means it's Mookie Betts. Didn't get, didn't, didn't, didn't allow myself to get the hopes up there. If it was a lefty National League right fielder, 
that leaves it to be uh, Bellinger or Yelich, which would have been a lot better. But a Mookie Betts pull? Can't be mad about that at all. I actually don't think I had him yet. Yeah, so he's a new guy. Doesn't look like he's going for much, just around 10K. But Mookie Betts on the team now. Now I don't have to worry about going out and getting him myself. I will 100% take that. That is, a, that is a solid pull right there. Nothing to complain about. Two diamonds in a row out of ball and packs. And we still got we still got these two to go. Headliner packs, I haven't opened up that much this year just because I don't really like buying them. <laughs> so I haven't had too much to uh, determine whether or not my luck has been good out of these. But you got a 1 in 10 chance of pulling a diamond and I have that twice. So what does that make it? A 20% chance that I pull a diamond out of these one of these two packs? I like those odds. Let's see. Let's see what we got. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing out of the first one. Just a, just a lousy silver. Actually, he's not a lousy silver in terms of silvers. He's one of the more expensive silvers. What's this one now? Set 14. Ozzy Smith is the guy. Let's see. Let's see if we can end this pack opening with some heat. No, another silver. That one's a lousy silver. All right, now it comes to the point of the episode for the gameplay, and I'll be 100% honest. I really don't feel like playing ranked seasons right now. I don't know why. I just haven't played the first game of the season yet, and I don't know, for some reason, I don't want to be playing it right now for this video. I, I think part of it is just because I don't quite like my squad yet. I guess I can actually make this change here. We got Mini Minoso. But, um, yeah, I don't know. There, there's still some changes I want to make to my squad. And, uh, like, I'd love to get Chipper up to his prestige and Helton up to his prestige. But, like, to, to do both of those, I have to play online. I don't know. There's just, there's just something about playing a game of ranked right now with this team that just... It doesn't, uh, it doesn't tickle my fancy. So I think what we're going to do, we're going to do something a little different. And I think we've done this now. It'll be the third No Money Spent video in a row that I haven't played a ranked game. Well, technically I did in the last one, but it was just kind of a, a slotting in of, of a clip that already was posted on my channel. But for this one, since I was talking about doing showdowns and working towards the Team Affinities next, I think we're going to play a showdown. And I think... I think I'm just going to skip to the final one because, like I said, I have one more ALE Stage 1 showdown to do before I have enough vouchers to finish up that entire division. So I think this is what we're going to do. I'm just going to hop in, play a showdown. I haven't had the best luck with this showdown, I'll be honest. Like, I've been losing a lot of the blue moments and then I'll get to the sale one with only like three runs towards the final showdown so I feel like I need to play it because usually I play up to this point right before the second red moment and then I, I skip to the end but I don't know I've just been having trouble and then I lose to sale and it just gets frustrating so at this point I may as well just skip to the end because I feel like it's the same su success rate as playing through the entire showdown so I think that's what I'm going to do and this first round is, is not the best right here I think I'm going to go Wander Franco though just because he's the only one who's going to hit from the left side. Garrett Cole is the uh, the main guy here, so we want to draft lefties to hit a righty. Devers is actually a good round there. And, of course, we need our obligated bullpen round, which nobody likes to do. This is a bad round. I'll be honest, this is a really bad draft here so far. Brandon Lowe, I guess he's got some good numbers. Uh, all righties in this one. Vlad's usually pretty solid. He's got he's got good numbers against righties. Voight's also usually pretty good for this. Honestly, I think I'm going to go Vlad. I just feel like I've been pretty good with him for this showdown whenever I've tried it. Uh, also, the same thing with Anthony Santander. Like, he's just weirdly good for me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take him. Travis Shaw, that's a great bronze to get. And I think this is our last actual player round. And this Jose Martinez is actually pretty good, too. Uh, I always like Inner Peace. That's a good one. Apo Taco. I mean, the bronze ones don't really don't really do too much. Um, if you're not familiar with Showdown, you only want to get hitting perks, and you only want to get hitting perks that will help you when it's not like a two-out situation or after the seventh inning. You want to get ones that are either just all the time 
or like when runners are on base or when the bases are empty. You don't want to get anything that's like out or inning based because it won't trigger during these uh, these showdowns here. So let's see who it auto generated for our squad here. Man, we did not get <laughs> we did not get good luck here in this uh, in this draft this auto generated team. Uh, we'll just go ahead and throw Shaw out there. It doesn't matter the positions if I'm skipping to the end. So, man, this Mike Ford is not very good either. And then we really don't have anyone else because no one on the bench is that great. Like, I got to be honest, I would never forfeit a draft on this just because I feel like it's a waste of stubs. I would usually play it out anyway. But just since I'm doing it for a video, I'm going to forfeit. This is just, I do not see myself... <laughs> scoring 16 runs off of Garrett Cole with this team. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the forfeit button. We're going to redraft. Again, don't forfeit a showdown. Like, there's no reason to. You might as well just play it out. Even if you don't like your initial draft, just play through some of the blue moments. You'll get some better players along the way. But this is already off to a better start because Reggie Jackson, 110-115 against righties. That, that is the card you're looking for in this uh in this showdown here and jd another really good one he is a righty so it's you know not the best matchup but he's still got 82 88 against righties really good pick there now we got another good one i'm i'm very glad i redrafted aaron hicks always a good one 83 power against righties and i know we got a lefty here in verdugo but he's not he's not anything special so i think i'm gonna go with vlad again and we got Oh, this is actually kind of a tough pick here between Martinez and Rowdy. I think I'm going to go Rowdy here. Yeah, I think I'm going to go Rowdy to Les. He's a lefty with good numbers against righties. So that should be pretty good. And all right, we got another chance to take Jose Martinez. Perfect. Perfect. He's, he's a good one. Jose Martinez is a pretty good card for this. Rio Ruiz, though, is not. This is not a good, not a good set of bronzes here. I guess we'll go Yandy Diaz. And then we'll take, I'll take Heart Attack just because that one's always going to be on. And we'll go Inner Peace. So we got a couple of slight contacts there. All right, let's see what it gives us for our auto-generated squad. Actually, Austin Hayes is pretty good. Uh, he's a pretty good auto-generation there. I don't know why he would be in over Hicks, though. I don't know why the CPU would do that. Do we have anyone... Sometimes you can get some good glitchy guys that pop up on the bench. And Chris Davis is a good one. Dwight Smith Jr. also a good one. So we'll go ahead and pop Chris Davis in there. And or yeah. And then we'll also um, we'll also take out this Higa Shioka guy and put in Dwight Smith Jr. Because he's got some pretty good numbers against righties. So like I said before, being out of position doesn't matter if you're skipping to the end. When you're playing any of the red moments in showdown i mean you guys probably already know how showdown works but if you're playing any of the red moments you don't play any defense so there's no reason to worry about your defensive alignment i think i'm gonna go dwight smith jr over yandy diaz and then i think i'm actually gonna be because you want to have a guy because you're not gonna hit with your pitcher but you can't put him in until you're actually in game so i think grichuk is actually going to be my guy to pinch hit for the pitcher. He's got pretty good stuff against righties. And if he ends up not working, we got Yandy Diaz to try. We got Austin Hayes to try. So I don't know. I honestly do feel pretty good about this team, though. I think this is a pretty good team to try and take down Garrett Cole. So I normally don't do it. I normally don't skip right away, but we'll skip right to the end. I also don't advise to skip right to the end because... You're kind of making it unnecessarily tough on yourself because you could at least play those first three blue moments if you don't want to do any more and you can get a couple of runs towards this. But we're just doing it. We're just going to hop right in. <laughs> this is going to be the gameplay for the No Money Spent video. Kind of unprecedented. But uh, I'm looking forward to this much more than I was looking forward to playing a ranked seasons game. And if I can win this, it'll be the final stage one showdown that I need to do for the entire American League East. All right, first batter stepping up, Aaron Hicks. I always try and be as patient as I can, unless there's like a meatball or something. But uh, it's always a good thing in the showdown to try and run the pitcher's pitch count up as high as you can get it. Because like, 
they don't bring in relievers. It's just the, the starting pitcher pitching the whole time. So if you can get his uh, confidence down low, or if you can get his energy down quick, that was, I thought that was going to be hit a lot better. But if you can get those things down pretty quickly, then uh, he starts getting even more wild, and he's easier to hit as well as more wild, so it's easier to draw walks and get guys on base for free. I think the easiest final showdown to do uh, out of the, the first stage of showdowns is definitely the NL Central because you got a reliever as your main guy. Josh Hader is who you're facing. So he's gassed by like 40 to 50 pitches in, which is only going to be like one time through the order, maybe a little bit the second time through. But like he's gassed by then. So then his velocity dips, his break dips. And he's all over the place. And I really just looked at straight through with Reggie. Sometimes you get too patient. I'm going to try to not talk as much as I have these first couple of batters. I got to focus up to J.D. Martinez. I'm taking all the way. I don't care who's at the plate. And there it is, ball four. First base runner. Didn't even have to swing the bat. Didn't even have to think about swinging the bat in that one. All four of those pitches were way out of the zone. And that's another walk. Two batters in a row that he's just putting on base for free. And another walk. That's three in a row. Literally just walk the bases loaded. I don't know what it is about these showdowns, but these CPU pitchers, they're always just wild. And <laughs> there's a no doubt home run. I mean, that that's, that's what it is sometimes. I mean, you just let the CPU walk the bases loaded to take one swing and put four runs up. And now I'm, now I only need 12 more runs and I've only gotten one hit. Oh, and I, that's, that's exactly what you can't do is go chasing at strike three. Yeah, I don't know what made me swing at that, but now we got our pitcher up, so we're just going to go ahead and take him out. I think I said Grichik was going to be the guy I was going to use, and hopefully he can get the job done. And right away, Grichik smacking that ball. It sounded really good, and it's gone. Okay, first pitch <laughs> that Grichik saw, and now we only need 11 more. Dang, I, <laughs> what is it? That's why I didn't pick Reggie out of that pack. Apparently I suck with him. I've really struck out twice looking with him in this showdown already. JD, that one smacked. Perfect fly ball, that's not staying in the yard with JD Martinez. That was actually a lot closer to getting robbed than I thought. But that's seven runs now, only nine more to go. Telez, oh, you got to run, buddy. Oh, you see, all of my hits so far have been home runs, and I don't like that because I like more in showdowns to get rallies going. I'd rather have just a barrage of singles and have runners on base than just constant solo shots because I feel like this is what will happen when all I do is get the ball elevated is I just start not being able to do that. Now we just made three outs in rapid succession. And that is, uh, that's not what you want to do. In like three batters, I went from being in a really good spot to now being in kind of just a spot. And uh, we're getting out again. That's not a pitch that you can be on top of. The momentum is definitely swung here. Davis, I don't think that has enough. Didn't get the best wood on it. Oh, it actually does. All right. It's a couple of rows back too. It wasn't even that close. All right. We're back on the board. Aaron Hicks, is that going to have enough? It has to. It does. That was a really good at bat, too, because I saw, I think, 10 pitches. So it ran up his pitch count, and we got a run out of it. Oh, well, he didn't strike out looking again. I don't know if that's going to... It does have enough. What is with all these pop-up home runs going out? This is great. Oh, and now JD with the no-doubter. Momentum has swung again. That's three home runs in a row. We only need five more runs, and we have ten outs to do it. Rowdy Telez, though. That's a shot to the opposite field. That's gone. This is this is kind of a crazy showdown. I have The only hits I have are home runs. Ooh, that was a borderline pitch, but drawing the walk with a common. And a walk. So that brings the winning run to the plate, and it's Reggie Jackson. If he can manage to hit another home run, the showdown's over. 
And that ball's hit deep. I don't think... Uh-oh. I made a mistake. Please get back to first. Why did you... That's exactly what you cannot have happen in Showdown, is brain farts like that. I thought I thought he wasn't going to get to that ball because he changed course. Usually when you see that, means you're not going to get there. And somehow my runner on first got doubled up. I should have known that wasn't going to get down because apparently all we're doing in this showdown is hitting home runs. And I think JD just went deep again. He's not going to hit a perfect fly ball that doesn't get out, right? Of course not. <laughs> so that's a tie ball game at 15 with five outs to go. But unfortunately, a tie is a loss in showdown. So we got to get one more run. And Vlad... <laughs> <laughs> the first hit of the entire showdown that isn't a home run is <laughs> when it's already tied. It's going to be a double. Winning run going to be on second. I'm going to see if there's anyone to pinch run because there's no reason to leave him out there. Uh, it looks like we got 73 speed. Perfect. He's not going to come up in the order. Oh, no. I'm a moron. <laughs> I'm a moron. I, I put it. Put him into hit, man. How stupid can you be? All right, well, let's not blow this. Austin Hayes is still pretty good. Austin Hayes hit that one pretty well, but I don't know if it's going to... Oh, it leaves. <laughs> okay, well, I put the wrong guy in, but he ends up being the one to walk it off and win the showdown. And just like that, I no longer have any more ALE showdowns to do, and that's great. Because in my opinion, that showdown against Garrett Cole is probably the toughest one I've had to do yet. And there is our last five vouchers we need. I'm not going to go ahead and put them in just because like I keep alluding to in this video. I want to have like a whole separate video where I just like do everything at once. And that includes putting all the vouchers in. That's why I'm saving them up. I want to just see my stub count and my pack count just jump up all at once after putting all these vouchers in. So I'm going to hold on to them for now. So unfortunately, you guys aren't going to see the fruits of my labor. But that is going to do it for this episode of No Money Spent. I don't know, not not a huge episode, not, not really huge changes. But, you know, there's going to be some like that, especially when I'm forcing one of these out every week. There's going to be some weeks where there's not as much progress made as others. But it was a nice little change of pace to play a showdown there in this one and actually win it. So make sure if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button for me and subscribe so you can see the rest of this No Money Spent series all the way up until we get that 99 overall Mickey Mantle. But with that being said, that's all I've got for you guys in this one. I hope you all enjoyed and I'll see you next time.